everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my July book haul and wrap up. books this month um, but I think I kept it pretty even between like actual book haul and wrap up we'll see um, we're gonna start with the book haul just like we always do I will leave a timestamp down below for the wrap up in case you want that we are a little bit late this month because Elliot was sick at the very end of last month coming into this month if you watched my choose your own adventure readathon vlog you will see she was sick um, so things are a little bit messy a little bit behind we're catching up finally um, so yeah book haul and then wrap up for the actual book haul I purchased how many things did I purchase looks like 13 books in the month of July some of these I already had read and then some of them I have since read so actually not horrible crossing my fingers there we have this pile here we're gonna start with um the fact that I went to Barnes and Noble I personally don't even remember why I went to Barnes and Noble but I knew going in I was going to end up buying stuff so it wasn't like a big deal that I went um but yeah I definitely went I bought some stuff I renewed my membership to like the new membership that gives you um like a tote bag every year and a little bit extra off and like free shipping and like I ended up spending quite a bit while I was there so it ended up like almost balancing out right then and there so it's fine but the first things I have here are some manga I picked my love mix-up volume 5 volume 6 and volume 7 by Wataru Hinakure I've already read these this month so I will talk about them in the wrap-up in a little bit um, but this is a series I have absolutely been loving it's male male romance it is about kids in high school and like trying to figure out you know what their romantic feelings are and that kind of thing um, like I said it is male male romance and it all comes about because of an actual like mix-up and there is mix-up stuff in every volume I've just been really enjoying my time with it so of course I bought the next three that I saw there I also picked up the seven year slip by Ashley Poston um, I really enjoyed what was the other one the dead romantics by Ashley Poston which was her other adult romance because this is another adult romance um, although I've also read Geekerella that kind of stuff um, this one reminds me in summary of the lake house with Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about but I love that movie and that feels very similar to this where there is some sort of romance developing but people are on like two different timelines um, I definitely want to read this I have not read it yet but I saw it as one of those like buy one get one half off or like something like that so I obviously picked it up then I got Yami Hara by Mizuki Sujimura this is actually a light novel I wasn't aware it was a light novel when I went to the store to get it all I know is that Mizuki Sujimura is actually the writer of a school frozen in time who had Naoshi Arakawa as the illustrator I really loved that series it's like a four book manga series um, it does deal with some like suicidal topics and things like that it is quite dark it's you know like more of a mystery horror sort of situation but I really loved that one so when I saw that this was gonna come out I knew I needed it but at the same time again I didn't realize it was a light novel I'm still very excited for it this is going to be some sort of horror ghosty thing uh, the strange kid at school the odd woman in the apartment building the troublesome man at work such people exist everywhere in everyone's lives all it takes is a word for it to start an unsettling question a bizarre remark or even a kind apology once their hooks sink in the cracks form darkness floods into the recesses until nothing else remains and then sirens screaming dull thuds on the pavement they have always existed they just are and when they show up people die like I'm very very excited to see about this because of the fact that like I liked this author's work in a manga and now we have a light novel then I picked up the new covers of the Shades of Magic series is that what it's called the darker Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab um, so part of this is I did want it but also this one as you can see because I didn't take the sticker off was part of the buy one get one half off sale um, so yeah we have a darker shade of magic I actually really do like these covers I still like the old ones too so I'm not gonna get rid of those but because these are gonna match the new book 
I had to get them, um, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light. If you're not aware of this series, um, I feel like a lot of people are, but it is the one that deals with like four different Londons, and Kel is our main character who was on book one, uh, and he can like go and travel between the different Londons. Not very many people can do that. Some of these Londons have magic, some don't. I really liked the magic system and the setup in these books, uh, and so yeah, I had to get them. Moving into things that were like more pre-orders, I had pre-ordered Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This is a book that I've already read before. I read it as an ebook. Um, you know, when it was indie published and now it has been taken up and getting published by like, what is it, Tor? Yes, Tor. Um, this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. First of all, I love the holographic sort of iridescent cover that we have here with the moon. Um, it definitely seems holographic but I can't tell if it actually is or if it's just iridescent, but it's like gorgeous. Um, and because it is the Barnes Noble exclusive edition, we do have like a foiling on the naked hardcover. We have end papers and there is an exclusive short story um, in this book that ties into the rest of the series. So there's like a part in this book, there will be a part in Raven Song, there will be a part in all the other Barnes Noble special editions. Oh, are you making a mess? Good job, okay, she's making a mess. Um, and so, yeah, I really love these covers. I really love this book. I needed it. Then we had a rainbow crate that came in this um, month. So we have Prince of Sorrows by Kellen Graves. This was the indie book that came in the box. It is absolutely gorgeous. We have red gilded edges, which I don't think I've ever seen, but I love. I like how underneath the dust jacket looks just like an old book. It's a collection of old Alvish myths. Like, it's like, it looks like a completely different book under there, which is amazing. Um, we did have a signed book plate, and then we also have end papers. This end paper art is like the original art, which is also very gorgeous from the um, original cover. And one thing I absolutely love about Rainbow Crate is they have these nutrition facts here. Um, so even though I don't really remember anything about most of the books that I read when I actually get around to reading them, we have like a snapshot. So they have like what the different representation is. Um, we have Achillean, Sapphic, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and depression representation in here. And then for plot, we have High Fae, Old Libraries, Forbidden Magic, and Court Intrigue. And this is 100% adult. So I like that they include that in there because it's a very minimum snapshot, but it gives me enough of what the books are about. They're Traditionally published book with a new cover for them is The First Bright Thing by J.R. Dawson. It does have the original cover here as well. This is going to be, I believe, sapphic and circuses. Like, that's really all I know. Um, and it's just like the normal book under here. They just give us an extra dust jacket, which they usually do amazing things with. Um, and again, we have the nutrition facts. So this one has sapphic and it actually says it's 1500% sapphic so very sapphic um, a little bit of gay Jewish black and disabilities so again awesome and then for plot circus sapphics established relationships time travel escaping manipulative exes and again 100% adult we're getting down there for the book haul the next thing I have here is the princess and the grilled cheese sandwich by Dea Muniz this is a book that I actually checked out originally from my library this month um, so we will talk about it in my wrap up again, but I was out and about at Target, I believe it was, and saw it on the shelf and had to get it because, spoiler alert, I absolutely love this book. It is a graphic novel. It is sapphic. It is about princesses and grilled cheese. Um, this is a very sort of funny book because everything is cheese. This is Lady Camembert who dresses up as a guy as like Duke Camembert. Uh, and this one is Princess Brie. Um, there's also a maid servant like nanny caretaker sort of thing whose name is feta um they live in the land of fromage like i just love that sort of tongue-in-cheek aspect to it but at the heart of it is the sapphic romance that i really loved um spoilers again but yeah so when i saw it i had to buy it and then the last book i picked up is Terminal Uprising by Jim C. Hines. This is the second book in the Janitors of the Post-Apocalypse series. I have the first book that I have not read, but I found this at the dollar store 
for a dollar twenty-five because our dollar stores are like dollar twenty-five stores now. But like a dollar for a hardcover that was in great condition to a series I want to read, and I have actually had people tell me I do need to read it that I would really enjoy this series. Um, so I had to get it. So that actually is the entire book haul. I did not have any ebooks in the month of July. Um, so we're gonna move into my stats and wrap up now, especially since Elliot has joined us. Say hi! Hi! We're feeling much better. 100% better. Yeah. So now she's in all my stuff. Okay, so moving into, like I said, stats and wrap up. So we're gonna start with the stats. We'll put them here since that just seems to be the easiest place currently with a baby on my lap. Um, I read 13 books in the month of July. Two of them are DNFs, we will talk about that. Um, and a total of 2,226 pages. Um, seven of them were ebooks, and six of them were physical books. The genres were quite all over the place. We had five romances, four fantasy, two sci-fi, one paranormal, and one retelling. Um, a couple of them actually could have been retelling, but I thought the retelling aspect of one of them was the main focus, whereas I think romance and stuff like that was more the focus of some of the other ones. For the book format, six of them were novels, four were graphic novels, and three were manga. Four of them were indie, whereas nine of them were traditional, so that was actually pretty good even though my original goal I think was like almost all indie this month didn't happen but you know not bad um how I got them so six of them are ones that I bought this year three of them are ones that I owned previous to this year three of them I borrowed from the library and one of them was an arc for age category six were adult and seven were young adults and then for the star ratings so we have a pretty even average right now. I have a like mid to sometimes high-ish three star rating. So this doesn't surprise me with what we got. Our average rating for this month was 3.69. Um, we had two DNFs, like I said, those are gonna be the one stars on this list um, because that's just how I keep track of them. Some of them sometimes are actually one stars. Some of them are just DNFs. Um, two three stars, one three and a half star, three four stars, one four and a half star, and four five star reads. So, you know, overall, not bad reading. Um, and so, yeah, let's actually go now through the actual individual books that I read from my lowest rated or the DNFs to my favorite book of the month. So for the first DNF, the first one I have here is Charming by Jade Linwood. I tried reading this in my Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon vlog, so there will probably be more thoughts there. Um, but ultimately, this was a book that was billed as John Tucker Must Die meets Shrek. Like, there's a Prince Charming who goes and saves princesses, and then instead of actually having a happily ever after with them, he steals their money and then does it all over again. And these princesses come together to realize this and try and take revenge. My biggest thing about this is that it was taking forever to get going. Like, the beginning... 10% or so I think of the story was one of these heists really introduced us to the character of Prince Charming and I actually quite liked that. After that though we get more of these princesses stories and Prince Charming's not really in the picture. I got halfway through this book um, before I decided to DNF and I just like couldn't do it anymore because it was taking forever. The princesses didn't feel unique to me um, but that wasn't even like necessarily the kicker. Also, the way that this book talks about some of its characters was just not good. Um, one of the characters is named Roland. He's like the assistant to the prince. And they talk about him in very demeaning and like the ways that they do it are, I'm, I'm assuming, trying to draw a picture of potentially he's not human. I didn't get to any part in the book where they confirm this or not, um, but they talk a lot about the way he looks and the way he acts and the way he speaks and the way he eats and like it was very not cool and then in one of the princess's stories in Rapunzel's story they talk about her being at an orphanage and when somebody came to you know adopt someone they hid the children with disabilities away because they don't they're not going to get picked but also the way that they talked about them they used the CR word which is not a nice word to use and one of the children who I think had something wrong with their leg was called Twisty. And it was just like so jarring. 
um, that I was like, was that really where we were going? And then everything else was boring. And so I was like, no, we're just not doing this. This is a book that I think I actually gave one star on Goodreads because I just did not enjoy that part. Um, the second TNF I have here is Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross. Um, this is more, it's a me thing. Like I don't think this is a series or a book for me. Um, this is paranormal romance. One of the characters is a werewolf who has not been able to transform in a while and the other character is a witch, I'm pretty sure, who's trying to help him. One of my issues with this is the alpha wolf in our main guy's head is very like alpha wolf behavior and thoughts and in such a way that I just did not appreciate it. Like that's kind of stuff that I don't look for when I'm reading books like this and I just didn't really like that. I could have pushed through however except for the fact that sometimes the writing of our female character was weird. Like she would go on about how she's so different than other people. She really loves comics and Star Wars and stuff like this but it was done in a way where everything was sort of info dumpy and like name droppy. Like everything was like oh Raylo this and marvel that and it was like so much of like trying to prove that she was this cool girl that liked these things compared to everyone else that i just could not read anymore i didn't really see any romance blossoming in the amount of pages that i read i know it was going to happen eventually but it was just at that point where i don't think it was for me Moving into my three stars, the first one is Zola Chapter 2 by Brendan Fletcher. I did talk about this in my readathon vlog as well. This is one of those things where I really did like what I was reading, however I wanted more from it. And this is Chapter 2, it ends on a cliffhanger, and there's no news on Chapter 3 or even issues going into Chapter 3 yet, so I don't know if this has been abandoned or not. Um, but this is a series about... A queen who's been transformed to be a tiger and her captain of the guard it is sapphic as well just so people know that is in here um it's very beautifully done like the art style is amazing but this felt like a middle book without an ending book and so it's a three star then i also have another three star which is mermaid by st lynn this is part of this author's black trans fairy tales series this is a retelling ish of the little mermaid with eric being erica instead um but then erica isn't exactly the same as the little mermaid either like in that story they end up coming into the actual mermaid world i will say also this book is like 80 pages so my biggest thing to make this a three star is it deviated a little bit too much from the actual little mermaid story to be a retelling whereas like cinderella had some deviations but not a ton and i really enjoyed that one this one had a little bit too many it should have been its own story but because of that also 80 pages was not enough. I just feel like it was middle of the road because I was expecting the retelling aspects. Didn't get enough of those. Got too many things that were brand new, but the story wasn't long enough to really execute them well. Moving into my three and a half stars, the first one, or actually the only three and a half star I have here, is The Backstagers Volume 1 by James the IV. Um, I also read Volume 2, which I gave four stars, so it's just barely under the second volume so i read volumes one and two volume one was three and a half volume two was four this was very cute i was just expecting a little bit more from it that's really all it is um this is a series that is lgbtq it is about people that work in the backstage area at a high school an all boys high school so we do have male male romance like relationships we do have a trans mask character um but the backstage area is mystical like it's bigger on the inside than what you would expect there are many different hallways and doors and people don't actually know where everything goes and like i said this was very fun the art is very cute i was just expecting a little bit more from it um because people talk very highly of the series moving into my four stars we already talked about the second Backstagers volume. So my next one here is Last Dance by Linda Joy Singleton. I read this during the Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon vlog as well. This is the second book in the Seer series, and this was a reread for me. Uh, I haven't read it in years, um, but this is about a girl who can like sort of see things, the future, stuff like that. It doesn't always happen. Elliot is 
definitely getting books over here doesn't always happen and in this one she specifically ends up seeing like a ghost of a girl who died many many years ago and it goes from there it's a little ghosty story I did end up giving this a four star uh, because it is something I had read before previously I apparently gave it five stars but I think maybe just because I'm reading it now in my 30s I've read other really really good YA books I was just expecting more from it the writing style of this was just not as good as things that are published more now because this came out in the really early 2000s uh, I still want to continue the series because I do want to eventually finish it it was very quick and easy to read um, and it was still fun it was just I remember it being better in my head than what I read this time so four stars my last four star is a zine this is our Punzel by a L Davidson this was something that I helped fund on Kickstarter it's a very very short like 30 something pages and that's the reason it's a four star I actually really really enjoyed this it's a sci-fi sort of retelling of Rapunzel um, from the point of view of like the people who were more of like if we're going by Tangled like the Flynn Rider character not actually Rapunzel I really liked the main characters in here they're sort of like stealing stuff like that sort of like handsome dashing thief um there is a little bit of romance in here again not with the Rapunzel character like it's very different than what you would expect if you're just going in with a Rapunzel storytelling so like this one I said was sci-fi not a retelling because it wasn't billed as exactly a retelling it just has Rapunzel elements but it is so so short like 30 something pages I just wanted more from these characters and this world um, and I have been told by the author because I actually made them put this on Goodreads so I can mark it on there that they are doing more in this series like it's gonna be something very similar like zine like stuff for every single book and I really like the writing style of it and I really 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 want more from this world so like I'm in my four and a half star which is in the lives of puppets by TJ Klune again talked about this in my choose your own adventure readathon vlog um basically if you're really into TJ Klune's stuff I do think this really lives up to his found family and his friendship aspects and the characters are amazing like we have a character who's a robot with anxiety we have a character who's asexual we have a character who I also feel like is very autistic even though they don't have that as like blatantly stated um, but I really love the characterization of everybody in here this is a loose Pinocchio retelling um, so I read a lot of retellings but not everything I said was a retelling um, but I really really love this one there were only a couple things that made me make it a four and a half instead of a five one was the way the blue fairy was handled in here and like that aspect I'm not gonna get into it too much in case you want to read this but for me personally I just did not like that as much and then um, the ending of this felt a little bit different than some of other TJ Klune's work like how I would expect it to end um, which was not necessarily a bad thing just unexpected but if you're really liking his work and his characters and stuff try this out because I really did love those aspects okay and then moving into my five stars the first three of them were my love mix up volumes five six and seven again like I said these were gonna come back I already read them I bought them I read them I loved them I did start reading volume five for again the readathon vlog um, but I continued that night even after I was done vlogging because I love these so so much they are male male romance they're really cute there is some sort of mix-up in every single volume and I just really like the way it's told the art style is adorable although one of the characters is also similar a little bit to Tomaki from Oran High School Host Club where you get all these amazing character and like artistic details and then something happens and it like looks so weird and horrible and cheesy and I love it I love this so so much one of my new favorite manga series so yeah five stars and then my last book that I have here my favorite book of the month was The Princess and the Grilled Cheese Sandwich by Dea Muniz obviously I saw it in the store and I had to get it because it was my favorite of the month um, even by that time when I got it like halfway through the month like I absolutely love this story again very cheesy aspects in here because everything is like named after cheese products in some way like I absolutely love it but also the art style is freaking adorable like I love it um, but it is sapphic sapphic romance I love the way that this happened it's cute it's funny it's heartbreaking in parts like I had my heart wrenched out at least once I cried like I love this so so much 
people need to pick this up. Like, I, I, I loved it. Favorite book of the month. Definitely a contender for one of my favorite things of the year. Like, yes. So, that is everything. Hopefully this is not a huge, long video. Especially since I'm filming this while Presley's at preschool right now. Um, it's his second day of preschool. Hopefully it's going really, really well. But it's going to be time for me to go get him soon. So, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Let me know your favorite book of the month, or least favorite, either way. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye!